Being in line and talking to each other and taking pictures of this this building and um, got to this space and I and I looked around and the, and the people all around me were talking in some other language. They were uh, Ukrainian Christians. You know, up until just a few years ago, they weren't even allowed to worship Jesus. And when the um, they say the, the wall came down, all these Christians came out. Because you can't kill this message. You can't make it stop. You just keep passing along. And so there were these, these people from the Ukraine, and they were talking whenever they talked Ukrainian, I suppose. And uh, I took a picture of uh, two of the people in our group. Is that on a step? This is really fun, isn't it? That right? My voice just kind of... And I, and I turned around and I took a picture of, of the two people in our group. I really didn't want their picture. I wanted the, the picture of these, these three women. Um, they were in their like, 20s. And they were wearing these white dresses. And they were standing in line, patiently, waiting to go down the steps, through the door. And you had to kind of get bent over down into this place where the, the manger was. One. And I wanted to sing. But I couldn't sing. These, these three women, their eyes were just, just this big and their face were glowing because they were going into this place and they had to, we all had to bend down. I think they did it like this. Everybody bend down. They had to bend down to get to the place to remind us that God had to bend down to climb into our lives. How cool is that? God was willing to take his immensity and squeeze it into our humanity. Lord, prepare Like they kept, they kept coming out. 
after lab last year, I got a song stuck in my head. He is jealous for me, the words go. Love's like a hurricane, and I am a tree, bending beneath the weight of his wind and his mercy. I, can't, I just can't get that, that, that song out of my head. I can't get the words out of my head. Imagine God knocking you over with his love. Imagine God just bowling you over with his mercy, not with, not with his angry power, but with this, this, this amazing kind of love. I consider, would consider that a good thing. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so. To have those words stuck in my head, those, those truthful words, those imagination, in, 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 inspirational words, gracious words, I'll take them. I'll take them for long as, as long as they're stuck there. Words are powerful things, yes? Words are powerful things. They can, they can lift us up and they can tear us down. Because words can get stuck in our head and get down into our hearts. And words can actually begin to shape us and mold us and, and, and make us become what the words say. Words can turn into ideas and those ideas become sentences that not only are in us but now coming out of us. And that can be a good thing. And that can be a bad thing. The words and the ideas and the images that are running through our heads make us into the people that we are. The people that we are becoming. The people that we're going to be. The word is a powerful thing. So I'd say that we should pay attention. Pay attention to the words that we allow into our lives. I've always said that, that uh, songs carry words into our lives and they go right past our heads and into our hearts. Be careful the words you sing because they will shape you. There is this wonderfully strange movie that I, I saw some time ago when I was watching it and, and, I, and I watch it a lot because every time I watch it I go, okay. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is in it. <laughs> I, figured, I don't know, I think he's kind of average looking. <laughs> ben is way more handsome than Leonardo. At least to me. The movie is called Inception. And this movie dramatizes the, the power of an idea. Take a, take a look. Bacteria, a virus, an intestinal worm. Uh, what Mr. Cobb is trying to say? An idea. Resilient, highly contagious. Once an idea is taken hold of the brain, it's almost impossible to eradicate. An idea that is fully formed, fully understood, that sticks. Right in there somewhere. Or someone like you just still. Yes, in the dream state, your conscious defenses are lower and it makes your thoughts vulnerable to theft. It's called extraction. So decide to weaken and train your subconscious to defend itself from even the most skilled extractor. How can I do that? Because I am the most skilled extractor. So, taking an idea and pulling it out of a person that's called extraction, Leonardo says, uh, we can train your mind to be protected against someone stealing your ideas. Imagine that. Imagine having your mind so well trained that no one can get in there and take your ideas out. Would that be called having a closed mind? Well, then on the other hand, to, to plant in an idea to put an idea in a person's head and in their heart is called inception. Inception. And it's a made-up word, but I like it. And Leonardo, in, in the inception business, he says, an idea, resilient, highly contagious, 
once an idea has taken hold of a brain, it is almost impossible to eradicate. An idea fully formed, fully understood, that sticks. So once that idea is planted into us, it has an effect. Inception. Not before you bother telling me it's impossible. No, it's perfectly possible. It's just bloody difficult. Just it. So Arthur keeps telling me it can't be done. Mm. Arthur. He's still working that stick in the mind. He's good at what he does, huh? Tomorrow's the past. He has no imagination. Not like you. Listen, if you're going to perform inception, you need imagination. Let me ask you something. Have you done it before? We tried it. We got the idea in place, but it didn't take. You didn't plant it deep enough? No, it's not just about depth. Yeah. You need the simplest version of the idea in order for it to grow naturally in your subject's mind. That's a very subtle art. So what is this idea? It's not how deep you plant it, it's the simplicity of the idea. So really, the, the main of, of is to be in the inception business. Did you hear me? The main job of Christian community is to be in the inception business, to plant an idea into the mind of the world. And it's not how deep we plant it, it's, it's an idea that is simple enough to understand. How about this one? God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Got that one? That's pretty straightforward. Maybe the simplest and most profound. This week we want to be in the inception business. We want to plant a word in your hearts and in your minds. The Word of God. And we want to also be about practicing all through the week, disciplining our own minds, our thoughts, our focus, so that God word, God's Word not only begins to shape us this week, but for the rest of our lives. And it will continue to shape us, affect the way we live. Back in the first century, St. Paul wrote letters to, uh, to churches and to people, the people that he had, um, had met along the way. And some of the churches that he, he wrote, all of the churches that he wrote back to, with the exception of the letter to the Romans, were churches that he himself had been and started. And so some of them he would write back and he was a bit cranky uh, because they were like going another way. And so he wrote back, I love the ones he wrote to the Corinthians. He said, don't make me come back there. Kind of like what your dad says, don't make me come to your room. So Paul was trying to get them back on track and even threatening to come to Corinth. Some of the times he wrote right back and he would answer questions that, that, they, that he had heard they had. Then there was, there was also the letter he wrote to the Philippians. And the Philippians, I think maybe might, might have been his favorite church, his closest connections. And, and some people call this the letter of joy or the letter of love. He just, he just truly rejoiced in these people. In chapter 4, that is our focus this week, right before our 8th verse, this is what Paul writes. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. I like hearing that word. I need to remember it myself. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present the request to God. And then I love this line. And may the peace of God that passes all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul's whole purpose in writing to the Philippians was to plant a word that would grow in them. What a word. I love that word. 
I have a t-shirt that just has one word on it. Whatever. My daughter perfected the pronunciation of that word. She's old now. She's also not here so I can say that. Don't let anybody tell her. I've used the one word whatever to put a distance between me and other people. People who are kind of annoying to me. I say, you do it. Whatever. I've used the word to, uh, to, to put a distance between myself and teachers, myself and principals. Between, have you, anybody ever used it between you and your parents? What ever. Pastors, right after confirmation, you walk out going, bosses and supervisors, whatever, we use it on our friends and we use it on our family, whatever, we use it to make space for our lives. But Paul used the word whatever in this letter to the Philippians with his best friends, whatever he said, in this case he meant it to be an inception, the planting of this word and idea. He meant these words and ideas to get deep down into their lives and how great is it that we have this letter. So Paul's whatevers are coming to us. So let's do it together. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Let them rumble inside of your, your minds. Let them take hold of your heart. Feel them and, and become them and plant them inside of others. This week, let's catch others doing praiseworthy things. Let's see God at work making things holy. See God making your small group leaders holy. Some of your small group leaders are over here and some of them are back there. I'd like everybody who's in lab to stand up and face a small group leader and hold their, your hands over them. And let's pray. Make these people holy, Lord. Bless them. Inspire them. Fill them. We want to see it. And then this band over here that has already begun to inspire us with their words and their music and their song and their and their commitment. Let's, let's, let's watch God make them holy and make their music holy. Lord, fill these people. Make their voice filled with your words. May their music lift us up. May the words they sing be driven deep into our hearts. Let's, let's hope that God will make this leadership lab holy, this time holy, this place, Augustana College, holy. Wouldn't that be worthy of praise? Yes, have a seat. This week, let's look for things to be made pure. Because whatever has God inside of it is, is a pure thing. Let it in. Focus on it. How about that? Whatever. Let's also be honest. Let's speak the truth for a moment here. We all have words and sentences inside of us that are not holy. Yes? Yes? They're not praiseworthy. Yes? That are not pure. Yes? I'm sorry. We all have words and sentences inside of us that do not help us to be holy. We have all have words and ideas in ourselves that have, that, that have been incepted into us by the world and by people that make it hard for us to realize that we are God's own chosen people. Yes? They kind of function like security agents inside our heads and inside our hearts trying to keep God's whatever's out. Looks like this.
and planting God's holy whatever is in. For this week's inception to work and to be lasting, we need to be disciplined and attentive. We need to be supportive of one another because we are walking along the same way. We will need to listen carefully to each other, listen carefully and deeply to how your friends and your new associates in your small groups and in this leadership lab, how they are talking, the sentences they are using, because underneath a lot of our sentences are unholy and unhealthy and unhelpful ideas. Here's some, I'm such a loser, I can't do anything right. Let's extract that, yes? I can't control myself, I have no willpower. Let's extract that, yes? Say extract that. Once people get to know me, they usually drop me. Let's extract that. If people really knew me, they would just walk away from me. What should we do with that idea? I am unforgivable. What should we do with that? What should we do with I'm unlovable? You know the sentences that are inside of you. You know the sentences and the ideas that have been planted in you by our adversary, the devil, who means to disconnect us from who we are, who means to, to, to put a lie to God's good word. When God says, you are my child, my beloved, the devil cannot defeat the Lord God Almighty. Right? Whose adversary is the devil? Ours. Satan doesn't defeat God, cannot defeat God. In fact, he's already lost. He's been thrown down. And guess where he landed? On the Great Lakes, basically. His, you know, when his tail went down. That was the, you know, Lake Superior and his, his buddies, you know, fell in Lake Erie, you know. Lake St. Louis was like one of his you know, teeth. The devil has been defeated and yet he is our adversary. And he would disconnect us from our world and from the truth that God has for us. These are attacks on our lives. These are spiritual assaults. And you know them well. They are spoken to you all the time. That's why this week is important. That's why the word that we will share this week is important. Paul wrote to Timothy, one of his, one of his uh, younger, you know, his, one of his disciples, and he wrote this, God did not give us the spirit of timidity to fall back into fear. The devil wants us to be afraid. God wants us to be bold. God gave us the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of truth and the spirit of grace. Ever hear these words? Wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in God's presence. Those are words that were spoken over you on your baptism day when the pastor laid his hand on your head, when he anointed you with oil and prayed for God's spirit. And God is faithful. And God will give you the spirit you need to withstand all the wiles of the one who would rip us away. So let's make this week a week of inception. Because I believe that God intends through the Holy Spirit to touch each one of us. Do you believe it? Say whatever. whatever. I believe that God intends to plant an important word in us. Whatever. Is. I believe that God intends to implant and incept important ideas into our lives. I believe that God intends to plant important sentences into our hearts. I believe that God intends to plant His Word, His truth, His love in us. Let's think about these things.